Hi. So, in the previous lecture, we were talking about the failures of nuclear power plants. And I briefly mentioned a term known as the moderator. So, I thought I should describe a little more what is a moderator. What are the most commonly used moderate, moderator materials in the nuclear power plants? And what are the properties that are needed for a good moderator? So here on the screen, you see a common reaction which takes place in uranium-based power plants. You have uranium-235. You hit it with one neutron, you get uranium-236, which is an unstable isotope. It further splits into krypton and barium. It produces three more neutrons gamma rays and a lot of energy. Now our concern is these three more neutrons. Hmm. Which one of them will actually participate in the in further fission reaction or which will pro propagate the chain reaction? Can all of them actually participate in further reaction? Can we control them? Because definitely in the case of a nuclear power plant we need sort of a constant energy because we are running uh, also you know, a steam turbine using this energy. So we need this energy in a controlled fashion. Hmm. So moderators are the materials that are actually used for controlling the speed of a neutron that is generated. So these neutrons are generated at different kinetic energies. Hmm. So you need to slow them down. Only then they will have a higher probability of participating in the nuclear chain reaction. So moderator is the material which is doing this job of slowing the neutron down. Now when I say that there is a higher probability of one certain event, that means there must be some other events as well. So what are the other events? What are the things that can happen when you, when three neutrons are produced? What you can have is these neutrons hitting the nucleus for example of another uranium-235 and experiencing inelastic scattering or elastic scattering. They may also completely bounce back. They may undergo what is known as a radioactive capture and one event is also that they can, they can cause the fission. Now this probability is actually defined by a certain parameter which is known as the neutron cross section or neutron capture cross section. What is that? This is as simply, simply the probability of a neutron hitting the target. Hmm. Target is your nucleus of the fuel atom. Hmm. This is measured in barns. Hmm. So the unit is called barn and one barn is equal to 10 power minus 24 square centimeters or 10 power minus 28 square meters. So now when we are measuring something in meter or centimeter, that means it is actually physically a cross-sectional area. That is what we are measuring. So how does that relate to the probability? Just think of this cross-sectional area as, you know, a target where you need to hit the darts, for example. Now that is exactly in that area you need to hit the dart and that is how the, the probability of how many times you will be able to hit. Huh? That is what is the probability of being able to hit the target nucleus. Okay, typically it is one out of three neutrons that will actually hit the target and that means it will actually propagate your chain reaction. Now, what makes a good moderator material? What would you expect in a moderator material? So, the size of the nucleus of this moderator material itself should be, is, should it be too big or should it be too small? Well, the answer is, it, it should be pretty much in the same region as the size of a neutron. Why? Because it will then lead to a good energy dissipation when it collides with a neutron. So the lighter atoms, lighter materials actually make better moderators because think about it this way. If you have two tennis balls or ping pong balls, two balls of the same size, when they hit each other, there is a good dissipation of energy. But on the other hand, if you take a tennis ball and hit onto a wall, then you may not get, then the ball will bounce back. There's no energy dissipation. Rather, there is a reaction. So that is why you need to have the atom of the 
moderator light so it should be as small as possible okay another property that we need is that the moderator itself should not completely absorb the neutrons hmm. now here i have not mentioned one thing you also know that there are control rods in your nuclear reactor hmm, that we also learnt in the previous lecture what do control rods do and how different they are from the moderator hmm. control rods will completely absorb the neutron while moderator will just slow them down hmm. control rods are made of materials such as boron and cadmium so they will completely absorb the neutron that should also not happen so your material your uh, moderator should be should just slow the neutron down but should not absorb it completely okay so what are the typically used moderator materials so one common material is graphite mm, graphite and carbon also carbon happens to be my favorite material so i like to read a lot about the history of how you know the current carbon materials have developed in addition to graphite you will also you can also use regular water because regular water has hydrogen and if you want to think about some very small atom you will always think of hydrogen you know that comes first and hydrogen is pre present in heavy water in, as well as well as in regular water so water can be used why not heavy water because well it is very expensive hmm there are beryllium and beryllium oxide also these materials have been used in the past but again the problem is that they are quite expensive so most commonly used materials are graphite and regular water regular water is used in about 75% of the plants worldwide so that is actually the most common material and graphite is used in about 20% hmm okay now in the past um, when the uh, you know early nuclear reactors were being established at that time they were called atomic piles mm, this was in the early 20th century graphite was actually the most commonly used moderator material mm. and that is why a lot of graphite was needed large quantities of graphite also graphite with a very high purity was needed for this purpose because if you had an impurity for example boron which was a common impurity found in uh, graphite then this boron you know that the control rods are made of boron huh? boron would completely absorb the neutron so that was very undesirable so what you needed was good quality graphite and in large quantities so actually this was one of the motivation for synthetic graphite preparation graphite and then also that synthetic graphite uh, the processes that were used for making synthetic graphite they led to also other similar materials mm -hmm. so certain polymers were heated heated to very high temperatures such as 2000 degrees 3000 degrees when these polymers were heated to these very high temperatures what you received was a very highly pure form of carbon but this was not always necessarily graphite depending on the structure of the initial polymer the precursor polymer you can get either graphitic carbon or carbon disordered carbon materials hmm. for example glass like carbon so this requirement of graphite as a moderator material actually led to the discovery or the process development of many other carbon materials which are uh, which we use which we commonly use nowadays in a lot of technological applications never mind let us go back to our nuclear reactor moderator water can be used as a coolant as well as moderator and in fact that is one of the reasons despite the fact that it has a high enough absorption cross section despite that we use water in most of the plants because it can be simultaneously used as a coolant as well and of course it is low cost that is why it is a very commonly used material however as i mentioned that the problem with water is that it absorbs neutrons that means some of the neutrons will go waste that means you need to have a lot of uranium 235 in your fuel hmm. now in the fuel typically you also have other uraniums you have uranium 235 also in the naturally found uranium you only have a very very small fraction of uranium 235 in the fuel so increasing the fraction fraction of uranium 235 in your fuel this is the process known as uranium enrichment 
So if you are using water as your moderator, in that case what you need to do is you must have enriched uranium as a fuel. Okay, now have moderator materials caused any accidents? Well, yes, if your moderator has certain type of impurities, for example, and it deviates, its performance, performance is different from what you expect, then that can also lead to failures or, or problems because you see, you need this material to control the speed of your neutrons. And if it is not able to control the speed of certain number of neutrons or if it is stopping too many neutrons either way you will not get the optimum output that you require so if there has been one fail because of graphite because graphite was used as the cap of the controlled rods so that actually rather than controlling it can just slow down the neutrons which makes them better for the uh, for the nuclear reaction so these kind of things can happen Sometimes also graphite rods, if there is a lot of oxygen and if the quality of the graphite is not very good, then it may catch fire. So these kind of problems can take place. However, if the design does not have any faults and if the moderator material has a good purity, then you can avoid such accidents.